In this video, I want to take a quick moment and talk about sharing a FileMaker solution between your desktop computer or laptop and other users or other devices such as an iPad or iPhone or maybe another office worker who has their own laptop or desktop computer. Now to get things rolling here, I'm going to need a FileMaker solution on my local computer and the one that I'm going to use is FM Starting Point, which is our free starter solution that's available online. When people start off using a FileMaker solution, they typically install it just on their local laptop or desktop computer. Of course, the great benefit and the true power of the FileMaker platform is the collaborative sharing between yourself and the rest of your team. Whether your team is in the office or out across the internet, FileMaker is exceptional at sharing a solution with all these users simultaneously. Now, running your own FileMaker database locally is a snap. However, sharing it with other users can be a little bit of a challenge if you've never done it before. But once you've seen it done and you understand the process, it's a snap. So let me walk you through this. If you have a local file on your desktop or laptop computer, you can share that file with other folks on the local area network by going up under File and down to the Sharing menu item and then over to Share with FileMaker Clients. And this brings up the FileMaker Network Settings dialog. Right here, you're going to turn on your network sharing. Now, in 99% of the cases, we're going to have a dynamic IP address. Now, this is a little bit of technical speak, but every device on the Internet has an Internet address. Every time you restart your device, whether it's a laptop or iPad or iPhone, you get a new dynamic address. So every time I restart this computer right here, this address will change. And that's what makes web servers and FileMaker servers special. With a dedicated server, every time you restart that system on the Internet, that server's address stays the same. These machines have what they call a static IP address. Now, in this case, I have a laptop computer, and I have an address that my machine got for me automatically when it restarted. I have my FileMaker solution right here. It's FM Starting Point. Now, I'm going to turn on access for all users here, and I'm going to select OK. Now, this FileMaker solution is sharing itself on my local area network. So let me jump over here and I'll show you this and I have my iPad. I'm going to select FileMaker Go right here. I'm going to fire this up and I see that I have several different options. I have Recent, I have Device, and I have Hosts. I can press the Host button and automatically FileMaker Go scans my local area network and it sees my laptop computer. I can click on the laptop right here and select FM starting point that's being hosted. As you can see, my iPad is actually accessing my hosted copy of FM starting point. The copy of FM starting point doesn't live on my iPad. It's simply accessing it temporarily across the network from my laptop computer. So I can go over here to my contacts database. I can put in Tom right here. And then I can jump back to my iPad, and you can see there's no update yet on the screen. If I click out of the field, it causes FileMaker to save the change to the data. And the screen over here instantly updates. As you can see, this is a live link between these two devices. This is what FileMaker calls peer-to-peer -peer sharing. It's important to note that we're not using FileMaker Server right now. We're simply using FileMaker Pro to share with other peers or other similar users. Once again, the computers can be Mac or Windows if they're using Pro. Now keep in mind, because my local device has a dynamic address, I cannot share this database out on the internet because the dynamic address won't work if I step out on the internet, say I go to Starbucks or something, the dynamic address won't allow me to get back into my office. 
That's actually a security precaution. Now, if I was really clever, I could set up my laptop or desktop computer with a static address. And then maybe I could access the database out on the internet from my iPad. But as it stands right now, the iPad is limited to accessing the database only while the iPad is in the office. So once again, this means if I leave and I go out to Starbucks, I won't have access to my FileMaker solution. Because of the inherent limitations of peer-to-peer -peer sharing with FileMaker Pro, my team at RC Consulting generally doesn't recommend the use of peer-to-peer -peer sharing with your databases unless you need to put together some sort of quick ad hoc network on a temporary basis. We recommend that users of FileMaker who share their databases simply move up to FileMaker Server or FileMaker Cloud. Now, from the standpoint of this conversation at a very basic level, FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud are essentially the same product. They do the same thing and they behave generally in the same manner. FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud eliminate the headaches and hassles that you're going to run into trying to share your database with FileMaker Pro. FileMaker Server and FileMaker Cloud provide robust support in terms of high reliability, encryption of the database traffic, and automatic backups to protect your database, as well as web browser access for Android devices and Chromebooks. All the things that you would expect from a robust and professional server product. Now, when deciding to host your solution with FileMaker Server or Cloud, you need to choose the best option that fits your needs. FileMaker Cloud is essentially a version of FileMaker Server that runs up on Amazon's AWS infrastructure. Basically, Amazon, the company, has huge data centers around the world. And you can purchase FileMaker Cloud and have it automatically install itself up in a data center preferably in a region that's close to you. These data centers are everywhere. Now, if you don't want to use Amazon's data centers to host your FileMaker solution, you can purchase FileMaker Server, which is a very similar product, but you install it on a Mac or Windows computer that you control somewhere. So FileMaker Incorporated, the company, frequently refers to FileMaker Server as the on-premise server. So it's an on-premise somewhere that you control as opposed to the FileMaker Cloud product, which typically runs up in a data center that's run by Amazon. For the moment, let's assume that we're going to use FileMaker Server on-premise. And here is the administrative console that we can access using a web browser. On the left-hand side of the screen, I can see the various options. I can see the databases or FileMaker files that are running on this server. I can also see the users that are connected to the FileMaker server. To make sure that your database is accessible anywhere on the internet, all you need to do is make sure that you take your FileMaker file and host it up on a properly configured FileMaker server. And of course, FileMaker server would have to have a static IP address. Part of the proper server setup would be to ensure that the server has additional hard drives for robust quality backups. As you can see by our schedule here, we are running a number of backup copies around the clock. If you use FileMaker Cloud, you don't have to set the backups up at all. The backups with FileMaker Cloud occur automatically every 20 minutes. Additionally, with our FileMaker server, we use solid state drives which greatly improve the performance of the FileMaker server. As a comparison, when you use FileMaker Cloud up on Amazon, the servers that you use will automatically have solid state drives, ensuring the best possible performance. The whole point is that if you want to access your database in a shared collaborative environment, you're going to need to install it and set it up on a FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud. Now, if you decide to go down the road of using FileMaker Server, the on-premise version that works on Mac or Windows, you're going to have to make a couple decisions. You're going to have to determine if you want your in-house IT staff to set up and run the FileMaker Server itself. They're going to need to procure or purchase 
the hardware that it's going to run on. And realistically, that's going to be at least a thousand dollars, if not two grand. Additionally, your internal IT staff are going to need to ensure that you have a static IP address reserved for this server. Now, some users actually choose to purchase and set up their own servers, but they actually co-locate them at a data center somewhere. So there are data centers out there that compete with Amazon, for example, and you can actually build your own Mac or Windows server and take it to this data center and load it up on one of their racks and host it there. So you can actually have an on-premise FileMaker server that actually lives up in a data center. And of course, the benefit to this is that you're going to have the most reliable internet, the most reliable electrical power, and of course, really good fire suppression and security, etc. Now, before I go, I want to show you real quick how you can take a local FileMaker solution running on a Mac or Windows computer and post it up to FileMaker server. This posting process is almost identical to the one that you do for FileMaker Cloud. So once you learn this, it's the same for both. Now, I already have a FileMaker server that we're running, but let's say for the sake of argument that I have a local solution right here, and I want to share it with the rest of my team. Well, how do I quickly and easily get it up on the FileMaker server? I can upload the FileMaker solution by going to the menu bar and selecting the share icon and then select upload to FileMaker server. You'll need to select your FileMaker server from available list of servers. Of course, if your FileMaker server is already set up, you would already have its IP address here, so you would know how to contact the server. You have to input a name and password that the FileMaker server will recognize. This is absolutely the same with FileMaker Cloud. FileMaker Pro can talk to FileMaker server and cloud automatically. And it also uploads the solution to the server itself. It generally takes just a few minutes. This is really a quick and easy way of getting your FileMaker solution hosted up to the FileMaker server. So to wrap things up, you can see that the FileMaker platform is great at collaborating with groups of users who want to share information. Whether those users are on Macs or on Windows computers, desktops or laptops, whether they're running on iPhones or iPads, or whether they're using the WebDirect technology for Android access itself, the FileMaker platform provides a rich collaborative environment that is driven by the FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud. So FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud for hosting your solutions, whether you're in your office or out on the internet. FileMaker Pro is the software you're going to use to access the database on your desktop or laptop computer. It also is a software that allows you to customize and make structural changes to the FileMaker file. And FileMaker Go is for your iPhone and iPad. If you're an Android user running a newer Android device, you can use a Chrome browser on these mobile devices and access the FileMaker solution using WebDirect technology. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to get going with FileMaker and what direction you want to go when you're ready to collaborate with your team.